because the world has changed. Right now, everyone can compete, everyone can make a way of it, but there's remnants of the old way, of the old school, of the how things used to be. Like, you know, Jared Kushner, right? You know, his father made a gift to Harvard of $2.5 million to get Jared in because he wasn't academically eligible. Now, there's a lot of things. And once, uh, once, once again, I'm not saying don't do good things for your kids. We should all do good things for our children. The issue is you have people out here acting as if they got to where they got in life of their own merits. And there's a lot of people that's true and there's a lot of people that's not true. But where we're going today in the world is you're going to have to have skills and you're going to have to be able to compete. And that is a big problem for a lot of people. That's a huge problem for many people. There are people shaking in their boots right now because they got to compete. There are people who are flipping out because they got to compete. They actually have to do the real work. They actually have to go out there and put get their hustle on and make it do what it do. The, there are no, the, the easy layups, the nepotism, the side deals, the behind the curtain deals, that stuff still happens. We got a long, long way to go before we get there, but we're heading in that direction where you have to compete. And that's problematic for many people. What's up? Diana, what's up, Art? What's up, Gabrion? What's up, Lamode? I'm doing great. Oh, we're going to go deep in this because, see, everyone's kind of freaking out right now. Let's, you know, we're going to talk about Trump. We're going to talk about geopolitical issues and why people are freaking out because there's one word, resources. Oh, a lot of people can't uh, compete, Gabrion. Um, I'm not a stock market investor. I'll get into that later. But essentially, it's about resources. It's all about resources. And when you're not used to competing and now you have to compete, you're calling stuff unfair. You're saying things aren't right. Like, let's just be really clear. I love this country. I think the benefits, the options, the potential for you to do good things are everywhere. But they're covered up in hard work. They're covered up in strategy. They're covered up in connections. They're covered up in the right education. Uh, I'll say this. The people with the most education will make the most money. But the most education is not necessarily a college degree. And that's where people start to go crazy because it's like, hey, you hear the thing is, go get yourself an education, go to college. You don't hear people break it down that you need to get into a certain field. You need to get into a certain craft. You need to have a certain education. You need to have a financial education. You need to have a scientific education. You need to have a medical education. You need to have a digital media education. You need to have a creative education. There's so many things that you need to have to proper education and just going to degree and getting a liberal arts. Just go to school and get a liberal arts degree. Uh, that's foolish. That can actually set through you and your family back for decades. That's just foolish. And people keep going, just go to college. It'll work and say, oh, no, it won't. So let's get to the resources thing. Uh, there was like yesterday, I'll, I'll tell you what I was doing this weekend. This weekend I was working. Yesterday I was doing a photo shoot. I'm helping a client. Well, I've been tasked for a client to launch a new company. So we're, we're doing the, the naming, the strategy, the product sources. You know, we're doing all of that stuff. And I had a photographer, and this is where the competition thing really comes in. Because uh, there was one person I asked, and he was just kind of iffy. Then I had someone else who was like, okay, I'll do it. Then he bailed like last minute. But I had said that we need to get this project going. So I reached out to someone who was dependable. And I'm, I'm going to just say it was a beautiful thing because he was ready. The model was early. The makeup artist was early. These people are ready to compete. They read to be about they, they out here. They read to be about it. And it was a beautiful thing. But the thing is, so many people want the fruits and they want the money, but they don't want to compete. They don't they don't want to be reasonable. They don't want to show up. They don't want to put out. They don't. It, it's just some weird stuff. And there's a lot of people with entitlement mindsets that they don't think they have entitlement mindsets. What is wrong with asking someone that you're paying money to show up on time? How is that a bad thing? 
because my guy was telling me he was having this issue with the makeup artist. He put together this thing. He set it up. An artist was trying to run the shop. So part of competing is knowing what playing field you're competing on. If someone else is paying your check, you are on the team. That person is the quarterback. That person is the coach. That person is the team owner. You are part of a team. You are not it. And that that's really bad with creatives because many creatives is like, you know, I am like the next um, Da Vinci or something like that when really you're not. Because I actually told two creatives, it's like, if you're so good, go out here in the real world, the marketplace right here, out here and hang your shingle and get to work. And let's see how good you really are. Because here's the thing with creatives. You could be really good. You could be a great artist because, you know, with both of them, they what they were hired to do. They were really, really good at it. That wasn't the issue. It was the attitudes. It was the work ethic. It was showing the work on time. It was trying to be a director when your name is not on the director's seat. So you have all of these people who have core skills, but they don't have people skills and they don't have management skills and they don't have marketing skills and sales skills, but they're out here trying to compete with one bullet in the gun. <laughs> You need to have your gun loaded. You need to have extra clips. And you also need to go to the target uh, range and practice. Uh, Ganji, speaking of photography, I decided to go to photography as a hustle. Got some used cameras and lens market research for niche. Uh, photography is going to be real strong because everybody's making videos. Everybody's on Instagram. Everybody's got to do images. Photography is going to be real strong for a long time. Robert, tell others it's bad because there's huge ego harmed. What do you mean? Well, that's really cool, Duran. Um, now, let's get down to the real nitty gritty of competition because I think I've told this story before. I used to work for this company, and the guy that I worked for, he was, you know, I worked hard. I'm a really hard salesman, blah, 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 right? Then one day, dear old dad comes by the company, and no one's in the office but me. And, you know, he's cool. He's real chatty. We, we had a little conversation and it's like, yeah, I started this company 30 years ago. Yeah. And he inherited it and he's really done well with it. He inherited a corporation with a paid X that was 30 years old with tax returns, multi-million dollar years. And he acting like he built that from scratch. He had such a head start. And once again, we should do well for our children. We should set them up like that. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying that you acting like you built that with a small million dollar loan from your parents, like you did all that. No. Head starts, financial windfalls like that, intellectual capital windfalls like that are huge. And for some of these people, they are the reason that they are where they are. And a lot of them will not say that. They just can't. They can't. So those people when put in a position where they have to compete on a real playing field, tend to wilt. They tend to fall apart because they never had to compete. And when they did have to compete, there was always this huge financial cushion. So even if things go bad, I don't lose the house. I don't lose the car. My wife's not going to leave me because we have no money. Because I remember one time we went to lunch and I got up the seat and a ATM receipt was stacked. It was stuck to my pocket and I just pulled it off and I put it back where it was. And I looked at it and it was like $780,000 in that checking account. I mean, most people are never going to see that kind of money in the checking account. And it was a personal account because I knew the company, I got paid from one account, which was from another bank. This was his personal account. There's no telling how much money he had in the bank. And once again, that's not a wrong thing. That's not a bad thing. It's just bad when you acting like you all that, when you, 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 you were born with a platinum spoon with diamonds around it in your mouth. Good thing. And you should be happy. You should be grateful to your parents, but don't be out here like you real competing. And here's the thing with the co competition, because like right now, you have a lot of, quote, pushback. And I'm not going to post it, but D.L. Hughley has this wonderful video. Go to D Google D.L. Hughley and Pew on Trump supporters. Now, many people, and let's be really, really clear, are not supporting Trump. 
they're tr supporting the reflection of what he is to them. Because I got into this whole thing, because, you know, this thing with PC culture, uh, people want to just say harmful, mean, nasty stuff, and then don't want any blowback or repercussions. Like, sometimes on this channel, I can be a complete ass, and I know I'm being an ass. So when I get pushed back, I push back, and we duke it out in the comments. But I don't go whining that I'm wrong. I actually lit that fire. I knew what I was doing. And I'm just real good at fighting this stuff. So, you know, once again, if someone gets the best of me, I have to deal with it. I can't, I'm not going to go out there and go like, oh God, they're attacking me. I'm being treated horribly. You know, you can't light fa fires and be mad when things get burnt. But with the competition aspect, it is a battle for resources. And if you think there's limited resources and you think someone else is getting a better deal than you are, you're going to be more mad at that. You're going to feel harmed. You're going to want to protest. But the reality is you need to be competing. I mean, that, that's the reality. You have to be competing. Now, how does one compete? How does one get ready for the next wave of money? We're going to have a recession. Don't know when it's coming. Two, we have a bunch of people who do not know how to compete. Do not know how to start businesses. Do not know how to hustle. If long as they're competing in a framework that supports what they like, like say you get a degree in literature and then you go work for one of these publishing houses and then you get really good in that position. And as long as publishing houses have lots of jobs and the environment is good, you're good. But whoa, wait, Amazon came along, Kindle came along, publishing houses started to consolidate. So you had that 4.0. You're really good at what you do. It's just the environment that you were good for disappeared. So even though your skills were hard won, you worked hard, no one wants them or there's not enough people to pay you top dollar for them. So that, you've got a lot of that happening. And another thing that you have to do to be ready for this new wave of money is you got to consistently learn. You have to be in, you have to be a perpetual student. That's what you got to do. You cannot just sit on your skill sets and think they're going to carry you for the next 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. It's not happening anymore. Those days are over. The easy layups are over. The the who you know, you can know someone, but here's the thing. If you know someone and you recommend a yard bird to someone and they don't perform well, that makes you look bad. So people, even if you know the right people, if they have no confidence in you, you're still not getting put on. So you still got to be performing. You got to still be able to compete. You still have to know how to do stuff. So one of the things that you need to do is to start reading every day. Read stuff that is not fun. I know this is the Internet. You got to enjoy yourself every moment of the day, but get up, read the news stories. Because uh, when people try to argue with me every morning, I spend about an hour to an hour and a half going through all the news stories, listening to stuff, reading stuff. I'm very well informed. Um, so when I have my commentary, it's rooted in facts, not just how I feel. And a lot of people hate me for that. But read, 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 read. Be intellectually curious. I want you to start taking trips. Start going to countries that you normally wouldn't go. I wouldn't say going anywhere dangerous. You know, we this Americans are not having the best uh, reputation right now. But even if you go somewhere dangerous, if you cool, you be chill, you don't break their laws, you're in their country, you can't be breaking their laws and go like, oh, I'm an American and this is what we do in America. You're not in America. You're, not, you're in their country. Follow their rules. You, more than likely, you will be good. Um, then another thing you have to do is start opening up hustles in businesses ASAP. You do not have as much time as you think you do to get this stuff going. You need to, if you spend, say, I'm, I'm just throwing numbers out there. You spend 80 hours a month watching YouTube. You need to do 80 hours of execution and cut your YouTube time to 10 hours. If you, I mean, you, you, your proportion of activity has to be much greater than your proportion of study. You've got to get out here. You've got to start stuff because 
Um, right now, the big thing is cryptocurrency. Uh, the big thing is always be out there hustling and these other things. But you have to start something. You have to get out there. You have to start it doing stuff because the next wave of money, there's going to be so much opportunity for people to become rich. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Like I'll take myself right now. I have completely revamped my business. I have uh, eradicated all virtually all my debt. I, I have business debt, but I usually pay that off. That's revolving. I'm not even, I'm not, I usually pay that off at the end of the month. So I'm not even consider that. That's not, I have no long-term debt. Um, and I'm positioning myself to make moves because in a country where you have people who can't raise $500 in case of an emergency, or let's just say 2000 cash can't raise it. You got 15, 20 grand when the, when things get really bad, that's going to be like having a hundred to $200,000. That's how much money that's going to be. Cause you know, we're going to experience inflation and some other stuff. Uh, let's see. Recession will come when the Federal Reserve decides, so probably when they raise rates. They're going for a mild recession, not a hard one. Uh, I actually think that's out of their control because interest rates are like 1%, 0%. They, they, can't, they can only cut so much. And there's some other factors. The real wage has not increased in damn 50 years. It started to increase in like 2013, and then it hit an, a rural bump because They've been, tr they've, they've been, they've been keeping it contained, but if you go back to the eighties, which weren't that long ago, you know, interest rates on houses were 11%. High interest rates are not necessarily a bad thing, but when you're trying to prop up something that wants to crumble, it could be high interest rates will just tumble that thing, but interest rates are going to go up. Inflation's coming. So the Fed will only be able to do so much because essentially they're just kicking this stuff down the road. <clears throat> but uh, I think this is going to be beyond their control. William Watts, what would be the real ideal amount of cash to have prepared for the upcoming recession? Ideally, 100 G's. Uh, realistically, most people should have like 10,000. You know, here's the thing. It's not about just the cash. You got to look at your liabilities. That's what kills most people, regardless of their income. It's their liabilities. You're going to have someone making 35000 a year and be fine if they have no debts. But if they've got debts, they're living with mom and dad. Or, you know, Google it. There are people who make thirty, forty grand a year. They live with their parents because their student loan payments like damn near a thousand a month. They're paying five hundred bucks for their car plus probably one something, one sixty for insurance and gas. So between student loans, car, insurance, maintenance. That's most of their money. So it isn't how much money, it's your liabilities. You want to get rid of as many liabilities as you can within the next 12 months. Because uh, let's just say I'm wrong and this recession never happens. Wow, you have no debt and a bunch of cash in the money. On um, what day is that? What, what, what day is that bad? When is that a bad thing? It's not. So even if it doesn't happen, your life will still be better. Uh, any good books? No. See, this is a good question. You need to read books that you are interested in that topic. Figure out some stuff. You got some work to do on what interests you. What are your skill sets? I'll talk about what I'm doing in a minute. Do you want to make extra money? I've got a few things I want to share with you, but first I need to be honest. If you're looking for a get rich quick scheme or you're looking for something that you're going to make thousands of dollars and not work that hard, I have absolutely none of that stuff. If you're looking for real pathways to make real money, I do have some things and they will take dedication. They'll take hard work and they will take effort. What I've developed is the side business starter pack. It's a collection of 23 courses ranging from utilizing Craigslist to starting a YouTube channel. It is very simple, easy to follow, and the courses are quick. You're not going to make millions of dollars, either, but with most of these side businesses, within the first three to four months, 
500 to 1500 dollars per month is viable real and can be executed this collection of courses is for the newbie you have no idea how to create a side business you have no clue to what type of side business should you start you're just out there wanting to make more money. If you follow these directions, they're simple, they're easy to do. I guarantee you, you can make money as soon as next weekend. In some cases, depending upon who you are and which courses you choose, you can make money today. Now let's define what is money. Most of these side hustles and YouTube is not one of them. You can start making 50, 60, a hundred bucks a day within a few weeks or a few months, depending upon how much effort you put into it. And let's be really clear, you must work. As I said in the beginning, these are no pie in the sky, these are no wild schemes. These are things that you can do with effort, hard work to increase your income. Let's talk about YouTube. Everyone wants to start a YouTube channel or a podcast. My YouTube channel is almost 10 years old and I've been making money since the eighth month. I reached a livable income my first year and I wasn't eligible for AdSense. There are many ways that you can start a YouTube channel and make money. However, YouTube is probably one of the most challenging side businesses to create. It's a lot of work and effort up front before you get to the paydays, unless you're a skilled operator. Here's my story. Before I came to YouTube, I ran a storage auction business. Yes, that kind of storage auctions. I did that for almost 10 years where I would buy units, take the contents and flip them. And this is how some of these hustles or side businesses were created, especially the Craigslist stuff. I used to make three to $4,000 a week just off Craigslist, day in, month in, year out. It's still a viable source to make money. It's not as easy as it used to be. There are ways that you can make a lot of money on Craigslist for free. One of the things that we're going to get into is the understanding of money. There's money, there's side money, there's profit, there's revenue. And part of that, if you go ahead and you get this course, I also have a free gift for you to get your finances together. Part of making money is accounting for the money you already have. This is going to be a very adult driven course. It will not be about you making it rain or you posting stuff for the gram. It will be about a dedicated, constructive and structured method for you to increase your income week after week, month after month, year after year. And that's where the real money comes in. My first year on YouTube, I made $62,000 my first 11 months. My second year, I made 92,000. And my third year, I made over a million. I was a skilled operator. I didn't know YouTube, but I know business. And that is one of the biggest things that will help you make a lot of money. Looking at and developing your salesmanship and developing your marketing skills. Many of these courses will deal with how to sell stuff on Craigslist, how to have a garage sale, how to start a YouTube channel. And there's a few primer courses, and these are very, very elementary on how to start a business online. Step by step, we'll take you through these processes. You can start making money online, offline, wherever. Everyone has to have a start. Many, many years ago, and this is not one of those internet stories, I was actually homeless for a little while, not for years and years, but for a couple of months. Then I moved into a situation called a boarding house where I was living with crackheads. Now this was a long time ago, but since I started to deploy these principles, Delayed gratification, hard work, and strategy. You cannot just work hard to work hard. You must be strategic in your hard work. I've never gone back and year after year my income has increased. In the beginning, it's gonna be tough. You're gonna, you might make 200, 300 bucks your first month, which is a win, but when you compare and contrast it to the people out here who are claiming to go from no money to six figures in six months, a year, you kind of feel that your efforts are not that good. You're like wasting time. The reality is the average person in this country makes less than 28 to $32,000 per year, single person income. Household income is two of those people together. So there's a lot of stories out there about people who are just literally no smarter than you, 
know better than you, and then all of a sudden they're making all this money. Uh, one of the things I do on my main channel is talk about money and talk about what people make and how to make it and how to build generational wealth. If you go ahead and get the side business starter kit and you make a thousand bucks a month on top of the money that you have with your job, you have drastically increased your chances of becoming rich in the future. That is a huge raise that you can give yourself in your side time or your spare hours. Now, let's talk about going from a side business to full time. You're looking at a realistic journey of two to five years. Let me say that again. You're looking at a realistic journey of two to five years. And I'm gonna explain to you why. First of all, no one ever said, hey, you can make money. People's like, get a job, get a degree, go to school, join the military. But no one ever said that, hey, you can sit down, you can come up with a product or service, and you can serve your fellow man and make money. No one says that to you. So there is this process of going from an employee mindset to a business mindset. And it's not gonna happen overnight. <laughs> it's not gonna happen as quick as you want. You, you eat what you kill. You can have a job and you can coast and you can still get your check on Friday. When you're self-employed, if you don't kill anything, you don't eat on Friday. And that's going to be another transition of going from your employee mindset to a boss mindset of, I got to get out here and I got to get it. Each day you must perform. And if you don't perform, you don't make any money. And there are days that you still must perform to keep money coming into the future. And we'll talk about all of these things in the uh, starter kit. Now in parting, I want you to really think about this. You're young, you look good, you, you, your teeth are clean. You, you're just ready to take on the world. If you start now and you stay on this track for the next 10 years, you'll look back and you'll be surprised at what you've accomplished. Because the biggest problem that most people have is getting started. Then the second problem they have is staying with it. Just click the video and you should go to the website and for $147, you'll get 23 courses and over 100 hours of training. So there's a little bit of something for everyone on how you can begin your side business. If you want more, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is moneyincomeprofit.com. So be sure to go ahead and sign up and get started today. Just know this, you my queen. You looking like some buttercream. You know exactly what I need. Hot cocoa, sweet and savory, and that's you. That's you. It's true. It's true. And that's you. That's you. You do the things that you do. I just know this, you my queen. You looking like some buttercream. You know. It News is depressing. This is why I read the news and this is why I listen to certain news. You know, I listen to Fox. I know crazy enough. You got to know what everything. I listen to NBC, uh, CNN. Fox is really good for an alternative. The Hill. You just got to look at a lot of different perspectives because all of these publications and media outlets have a certain amount of spin. Some more than others. Fox and probably NBC, NBC. But... If you read 10 blogs, 10 papers, 10 sources, and they all talk about the same thing, you're going to come to a better understanding because each one's going to leave something out that doesn't go toward their spin or their narrative. And then when you read all that stuff, you have a better understanding of the subject matter. Like right now, McConnell's holding pro forma sessions to keep Trump from doing a recession appointment. The Democrats were working on that, and McConnell said, no, I got that. I got that. But you don't hear anyone talking about that. Because that doesn't because essentially Congress is at war with pre, with Trump right now. They're they're at war with the president and no one's saying that. But that's what's going on. They forced him to sign a bill he didn't want to sign. I mean, he's it's, he's under siege. 
But you will get that if you listen to Fox and then you will get too much if you look to NBC, you know, was it MMB, in whatever, MNBC, you'll get too much of that. Um, you listen to Fox, you get more of a millennial viewpoint. But when you look, put them all together and you're like, OK, and you look at the same facts across all of them, you come up with a better understanding. Uh, I think we're already in a recession, just to be real about it. Uh, crypto, I think crypto at some point will become the dominant currency. I just don't think it's going to become the dominant currency as fast. Because here's one of the issues with crypto. If you go out and you get your own mining equipment, you could create your own money. Think about that. One of the reasons that the dollar is universal currency around most of the world is this a standard. The, you know, you got all these folks mining Bitcoin. Selling the machine, you know, because essentially what's happening, folks who are really making the money are the ones who are selling the mining machine, the information. They're, that's where they're making the real money. Um, I think it's going to convert at some point, but we may be two decades away before that goes mainstream. Literally. Uh, do you believe there are secret societies that rule this world and keep those with the wrong mindset screwed? No. I think there is an elite, several elite groups of people who shape and formate policy. And I don't think they meet in a dungeon or they have these secret rituals. But I think the intellectuals, the wealthy, the creatives, they rule the world. Some shape, fashion, or form. But I don't think of, I'm not really believing in the Illuminati. Uh, James Davis, did you know that American News is promoting fear mongering over in Canada and they promote positive news and have less crime because of it? Uh, Canada is a different country. I can go to Japan right now. I can go to China right now and I can go to Thailand right now and I can drop my wallet on the street and nothing's going to happen. Those are countries are culturally different. You cannot talk about a different country and different culture and then talk about the United States in the same manner. That doesn't work. You got to compare apples to apples. Oh, yeah, the BBC News uh, blogs. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, it happened last week. Chinese create Bitcoin cash, but the majority is selling it off. BT The Grid just ran lawn service. Once 30 yards was set up LLC before launch service started hitting the gigs on Craigslist. I've been gaining on you. <laughs> you want to go to South Beach? Uh, T stamps. I've seen your videos on how you've done well with without stocks, but when the market crashes, and let's say you have cash saved, you wouldn't agree to investing in the market. Maybe a mill. Mill ticket to wealth. Uh, what's up, Catherine? Okay, here here's kind of what I'm the whole core, the genesis of what I'm talking about here. The fastest path to wealth is to start a successful business. I'll quantify that. To start a business won't get you there, but you start a successful business, a person who will work hard, who does the right things. Because there's several steps. There's just not this one thing, but you could literally from nothing in three to 10 years become a millionaire. You don't have enough cash to put in the market to flip it that fast. Uh, you can become very wealthy in the market over 30, 40, 50 years. And, and with the market thing, let's say you're 70 years old, you're ready to cash out and the market crashes. You're screwed. You're screwed. So for me, me, I'm doing business building. I am not doing the market. That's just me. I'm more comfortable with that level of risk. I have more control and I can see the returns much, much faster. So I'm not in it because when you look at now, you have to look at this too. I'm a creative. So if you're not a creative, you know, maybe the stock market is the thing for you. It's just like I can create stuff at will. Like I can't get into what we did, but we came up with a name, we came up with a marketing plan, we came up with a concept, and we've done some soft testing, and I know this stuff is gonna sell. I don't know how well it's gonna sell, but I know it's gonna sell. 
And this literally was a four week process. And this is probably going to be a six figure company within the next from scratch, not my company, a company for a client. I'm being paid the bill. It's going to be a six figure company probably within eight months. Uh, the initial investment was 15 G's. So anyone that know that you can put 15 G's in the market, create a company that throws off cash after caring for itself, after paying employees, after buying, please point that stock to me where I can drop 15 grand in and make that kind of money. Please. It don't exist. If it's not, if it, you know, if it's legal all day long, but if it's a legal investment vehicle, you're not getting those kind of returns that fast legally. It ain't happening. So, because like I said, I used to be in the market. Um, once again, I understand the draw, and this is kind of about competing, where you can put some money somewhere, have your money working for you. The sound, those are good principles, but the reality is the average American doesn't have enough money to really move the market fast enough. So that's me. Uh, do you think Donald Trump is truly racist? Yes. I started on one yard neighbor, okay. Well, let's see. I started on one neighbor's yard, watched that come to four one street referrals, learned a lot from you, Glenn. See, this is the thing. Like, you know, there's a video if you want to watch it. It's um, how to start a service business. You can literally grab a lawnmower and do that all day and make money. Hard work, but you could probably build that kind of service during the season. And then when fall comes, you need to be doing leaves and stuff. You could get up to a G a week after expenses very quickly, very quickly. But a lot of people are like, I don't want to do that. Andrew Bruno, I dumped 20K into Facebook and turned it into 50K legally. It's called marketing. Okay, we were talking about the stock market. You, What you're talking about is the same thing I talked about, which is a business. Think about that. You dump 20K into marketing for a business. This isn't a stock market investment. So, you know, it's kind of cute, but the reality is you just emphasize my point. Because who could take 20K and put it into the stock market, not into a business, and make 50 grand really quick? Legally. You just proved my point. Thank you. Oh, I'm not doing the hustle you. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little later what I'm getting ready to do. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. I'll talk about that on my other channel because this is about competing. This is about getting out there, getting skill sets where you can make some money in any environment. Uh, Melissa V, I get a ton of crap, cheap, cheap crap because no one wants to hard work. Uh, the Vita, I'm building my answering service. Now I have 10 clients. Now, see, let's, let's talk about me. I'm going to read a few more comments and I'm going to tell you what my plan is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was stock market, man. It's, you know, you, you prove my point. A business will make you more money faster than any stock. Of, well, a successful business will make you more money than the stock market investment. Faster. You get to control it. You pull that lever. You can't do that with stocks. There's too many in the variables. Uh, let's see, James. I heard a wise man say the horses wear blinders so they can't see the other horses next to them in the race. They focus on the finish line. People need blinders. Don't worry about the competition. Okay. Lease off of two. What I'm saying. Uh, Mac Daddy Media. If you follow me on Instagram, I changed my Instagram to Mac Daddy Media. I actually put a picture of the model on the Instagram from the photo shoot. And I'm going to be going more toward creative things. You're going to see more pictures. I decided that, you know, if it takes me 20 years to get Mac Daddy Media where I wanted to be, fine. I'm cool with that. I'm all in. So you, you'll see a lot of changes on the channel. I'm probably going to be doing one video a week and one live stream, maybe. And then I'll be building out the other channels because going back to what the Vita said about the service and the 10 clients. If you pick a business model that you enjoy, that you have competent skill sets, and you continue to work it, it will become successful. No, you may not become a millionaire. No, you may not become a billionaire. But I'm here to tell you, 
if you are pulling out three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars a year after expenses, insurance, and taxes out of your business, you live in rich. Your kids are going to private school. You got more money than you know what to do with. So you don't necessarily have to quote be a millionaire or even be a billionaire to have an ex outrageously lavish and extraordinary life. You really don't. And that's one of the things, because on my Facebook page, I actually put out there that there's only 2,045, 2,045 billionaires worldwide out of 7.2 billion people and growing. And there is 15, probably 17 million millionaires worldwide. Worldwide. You have people putting up on Instagram like billionaires are dropping off trees like leaves and falls. It's simply not true. And most of the people who are billionaires other than the Zuckerbergs or um, the Travises of Uber, they've been at it for decades. The majority of those people, you go ahead and look at the money, they've been at their business for decades. This is not like I'm a billionaire. Uh, let's see, when was Facebook? Like 2004, five. So it's like 12, 13 years old. They've been at it a minute. This was not like press button, become a billionaire. Uh, Malcolm Brown, what do you think about starting a YouTube channel? I'm going to drop a little YouTube game on you. I am currently not doing the things that YouTube wants me to do. And I know this. I know that if I started to do three videos a week, I start to do more trendy topics, my channel would explode. I don't want to do that because I want to do me. And once again, this is me putting on the big boy pants and realizing that if I don't give YouTube what it wants, it's not going to promote me. It's their platform. I'm here to have fun. So if you start a YouTube channel, you need to do what they want you to do or your channel will go nowhere. You can have amazing content. You can have great videos. They ain't pushing you. Uh, YouTube will not even show all your subscribers. They will not send a message to all your subscribers. It's real. Like when I first started, I would always regard it. It became inverted around 2013. It used to be every time I put up a video, I would, you know, even when I had 200 subscribers, I get 500 to a thousand views because the views just, there was less video inventory. But if you want to start a YouTube channel and you want to be successful, you need to follow the YouTube playbook and do that stuff. And you can make money. I'm making money outside of YouTube. I use YouTube to get clients and stuff like that. But YouTube directly, I don't make really that much. I think I made like $246 last month. So start one. If you want to win, you got to do it the way YouTube wants you. What's up, Pat? Oh, 2004. Okay. So Facebook's 13 years old. Facebook went through a lot of stuff. Zuckerberg went through a lot of stuff. Appreciate that, Patrick. He has to get past the ML. <laughs> multi-level marketing is, this is my thing on multi-level marketing. To be successful, you have to work as hard as you work on your own business. I mean, there's plenty of people making money, but um, it's hard. Let's see. Uh, what do you call hustler porn? When you see someone who wants to teach you how to make money and they have a Ferrari in the mansion. Hustler porn. When they talk all day long and they never tell you how to make money. They tell you about how your life will be once you get money, but they don't tell you how to make money. Unless you spend the, the money. Uh, it's cars, it's chicks, it's a lot of glib. It's not built in substance. That's hustler's porn. Uh, Patrick, Lou, what advice do you have for a recent college dropout? Computer science, but I've been coding since I was teen. I just hate academia's authoritating culture. Uh, my advice to you is take your skills and try to make money as fast as possible with your own business as a freelancer. And Andrew, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what's open to you. Um, multi-level marketing, once again, it can work, but you're going to work your ass off. Uh, 
Uh, William Watt, speaking of having more money than you know what to do with, since I started budgeting my money into four different accounts, my life financially has never been easier. You sound like you watched that video of the five financial, uh, I don't even know the name of it. It's like the five, five financial steps business owners need to make. Yeah, because essentially, if you manage your money, your life is better. If you don't manage your money, your money's going to manage you. Billy Gardner. Hey, Glenn, I'm 15 years old. I started this year with a hustle. I was sort of like jailbreaking fire sticks, but with a lot more money. Now that the hustle is gone, I have copyright complaints. <laughs> I also have a maid service, and I don't want to invest 3000 a month in the ad words, but my mama says it's risky. What do you think I should do? I think you should listen to your mother. I don't think you should list, invest 3000 a month in the ad words. I think you need to build out your business model on the maid service at 15. That's interesting. You need to get clients and then get referrals. Ty Lopez has a lot of hustler porn and stuff. The worst are the pro talk gurus. What are the pro talk gurus? What's up, Shalice? Let's see. Pep oh, pep talk gurus. Let's see what's going on. I don't know. It seems to be good on my end. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's kind of going in and out. But essentially what happens is when it renders, it'll be fine. Typically. That's typically how it goes. Yep, Chris. She is. Let's see. Cartel. I should have studied medicine at university. All right. If you, I, whoa, 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 whoa. You got to really answer that question yourself. You want to be a doctor? I mean, that's what you got to do. Do you think Ty Lopez is wrong in his teachings? I know Ty Lopez has a lot of hustler porn marketing. I can't say about his teachings. I've never taken any of his courses, so I don't know. What's up, Barton? I will say that one thing he said, which is true, you can't sell anybody anything unless you have their attention. And also you have to look at who his audience is. His audience is literally 12 year olds to 22 year olds. Lamote never broke action pack works. Thank you. And the advertise and Instagram works also as well. Cool. I mean, there, there's so many things to do it, but you know, getting back to the core of this, you, you gotta be able to compete. You're going to have to be keep, to be able to compete. Like you never competed before. Um, you, we're going to probably have some form of chaos. And what I mean is like society is not going to stop functioning and we're not going to have a walking dead scenario, but we're going to have some economic chaos where there are some people who are just going to be 100% ass out. Um, if you're 50 and you don't have it together now, life could, your chances are you screwed unless you really make a determined effort to start changing your life. Now, if you're 35, you still got some time, you know, you're 25 and under, you got plenty of time, but this one is going to rock a lot of stuff. And also, the reason I'm talking about competing is I had to compete on online. And what I mean by that is, I, in 2009, I didn't know any of this stuff. I was using an electronic potato to do my YouTube channel. I had to learn so much. I got headaches every day. But I learned how to compete. And, you know, talking about, you know, once you learn how to compete, you can make decisions that are appropriate for you. Because, like, I don't see myself doing Snapchat. Maybe that's a bad decision, but I don't like it. So I'm not there. I'm Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And unless something, because one of the things that I learned from, oh, here's a new platform, jump on it, attention grab, I got distracted from my real business. And I looked at that, and I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. Like, you know, Hustle Camp. That's going to go on probably for the next year because the whole thing is get that good financial base, manage your money well, learn how to make more money than start a business. Because I started, my first five businesses failed. 
And one of the reasons that it failed was a lack of knowledge. Knowledge of self, knowledge of business, knowledge of how to sell stuff. That was really huge in my failures. And you can have people who put together some really good courses, but until you go out there and you execute, you start dealing with customers, you start being in business, you're not going to know. And it's going to be really hard for many people. The, the reason that businesses fail is people do not have sales skills. They do not have marketing skills. If you have sales skills and marketing skills, you can usually work out the rest. If you have all of the rest, you're usually going to be an employee. So it, it's really, really powerful. That's all. Let's see. T stamps, that's a whole nother video. I may do that later. Andrew, Ty Lopez actually is not that smart. Um, I'm gonna disagree. He's I think he's real smart. And you know, when people say he took advantage of YouTube ads and stuff, dude spent millions of dollars before we knew he was Ty Lopez he is today. He had a bunch of bread. So stupid people with a bunch of bread, that is usually not normal. <laughs> that is not normal. Uh, he that money came from somewhere. Um, I don't really think about Boyce Watkins. I don't watch the channel. Um, we are, I think, diametrically opposed in many things because even though I am one of those lovely chocolatey brown black folks, my teachings are for everybody. I'm not just going ahead and say, look, hey, you know, black folks. It's like, look, I think that as we as society, society grows everybody's coming together and what you have right now and this is kind of like the the resource thing where people are getting in this camp so i'm in this camp i'm in this camp and i think you, it's just not the way to go you know anyone can do what they want to do but i'm not in that camp because part of it is as a group of old races die out because I, I look at a lot of demographics. I actually go out and talk to young people. And I see what they're doing. And they're not acting like their parents. So to get into this isolationless, uh, get into this namby-pamby, to get into this rah-rah stuff about saying all kinds of despicable stuff about other groups because you feel that they're doing something to you when really they're not, it's just stupid. What's up, Ben the Bartender? Uh, let's see, I think you enjoyed this. I had a guy trying to super lowball me on the sale this morning. I turned him down, obviously, looked at his buyer account, and he has super low ratings. <laughs> uh, your mom could, just isn't paying attention. A lot of people don't think this recession is going to happen. A lot of people think we're just going to keep going. Black Bird, what's going on? Uh, what are your thoughts on using ClickBanks and other type of affiliate marketing to create products or services to sell for custom created websites? ClickBank has made a lot of people a ton of money. I don't like ClickBank, and I'm going to tell you why, and it's 100% personal. When I wrote my first storage auction book at my course, I had a lot of these ClickBank people coming at me saying stuff like this, like, hey, you know, I see you got a storage auction product. This is what I want. I want 75% of the deal and you can use my email list they were coming at me like i was just like some little street orchard and i was like no 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 and i just kept it all to myself so i didn't really like the attitude i didn't like how the whole thing worked it just didn't work for me now with that said if you like clickbank and you like how it goes down by all means oblige yourself but i'm just not feeling it Let's see. I refuse to be in any camp. I'm a long wolf. Arr! Chris McDonald, too many naive black people fall for the pro-black porn entertainment industry. <laughs> what about getting married? It's two different things. You can start a business and become a billionaire and not be married. I don't even know how that question comes into the conversation. Now, I do have a course called Disruptive Mating for those of you who need that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. 
Megan, Chris McDonald, I know this is, that's why I dropped that mentality. James Davis, can you explain how to write on the wall behind you works? It's called a whiteboard wall. There's some stuff that you put on the wall, and you it's like an acrylic, and you can write on it and erase it. Oh, no, I don't think he loaned the money. I think he had the money in the bank. Tyler, all right, here, here's the thing, and I, I want you guys to understand this. There's a lot of people who are online who have other businesses that you don't know about. I'm one of them. I got a business I don't even talk about. I actually told someone that I was going to go, I'm probably going to start a physical product business very soon, and I'm not even going to tell you guys about it. It's for me. There's so many things. I got, I know a guy. Everyone knows a guy. And every time you see him, he looks like a surfer dude, right? Sometimes you'll see him like just looking like tore up from the floor up. And I know for a fact he's worth 20 mil. You see him, he's just like some regular guy in the store. But if you don't know him and you don't know what he does for a living, and I say that because there's a lot of smart people online who know that if they got a winning business model, the last thing they want to do is come on YouTube or Facebook and talk about it and create a bunch of competition for themselves. He had that money. He didn't, it wasn't a loan. He had that money. Let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where, where, where are we? I lost it. Been the bartender. Global economy not, cannot sustain itself with just a single race selling to a single race. I mean, there it is. Already explained that, James. Uh, tell all right that. Uh, I got this on my Facebook for, you know page. Matter of fact, hold on a second. I, I think I can. Uh, let's see. I may, I'm going I'm to see if I can get in there. I'm going to see if I can be on my my game today. I'm going to show you something because I was talking about this. Because essentially a lot of people get into this stuff just to be disgusting to other groups of people. It's not about preservation of your group or respecting your ancestors. They just want to be nasty and mean. I love the stormtroopers. Let's see. <laughs> I, that's why I call it the Hotep Nation. A lot of those guys hate me. Uh, what about the real estate people like Grant Cardone? Grant Cardone is a marketing person and a sales trainer as well as real estate. I knew when Grant was struggling on YouTube, Grant was honest about how the recession really messed up his financial portfolio and how he had the 10 exit. Grant's in a whole ballpark by himself. Uh, super rig. Good afternoon, Glennon. I am in IT making a hundred plus a year and I hate it. Moving full throttle with my cookie company. Your bids are a great source of, uh, inspiration, bro. All right. My advice to you is stack your cash because you want to get out of that business. You need to start living on 45,000 a year or less and stack the rest because here's the problem with people who make a lot of money or good money and starting the business. You have to put yourself in a position to struggle. Not many people are mentally strong enough to do that. Uh, some of my worst clients were quite well off. I had one who I think the, their income was like 1.5 million. Every time we try to do something, they was going on vacation and some other stuff. It was just nice person, but just like you're not going to if you got bread, you're not going to struggle when you don't have to. It's just not going to happen. For most people, it's just really not. So start stacking your bread and start paying off all your credit cards and start living as lean as possible to prepare you to be a business owner. Lamar Williams finally caught you live. I've been watching you for about three years now and I made major progress due to your content. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Kishan says, I know a guy, I know a dude that sells surfboards, fins, 80 to 100 a piece, and he ain't on the internet. 
There's a lot of people who are not on the internet. I mean, this is why I'm saying get your skill sets up. There's so many ways to make money, but see, everyone wants to go through what I call a proven, defined blueprint way, like turnkey success. And that's why so many people get got because they're looking to avoid all that hard work. Stefan Mooch, listen to your advice and now I got the skills to pay the bills, baby. Congratulations. Uh, Ganja, I study those groups to be aware of who I should stay a mile away from. Oh, I, I got one better than that, Andre. Uh, get your income up. This is something we we'll be discussing in Hustle Camp to the point you can save 50% of your income. Like going back to the stock market thing. The reason I was able to put so much money in the stock market was I was living on 50% of my income. But I had a high income. When you get your income up, so many doors open if you can keep your mindset stable. See, I've been poor. I know what going hungry is like. I know what it's like to wake up freezing. I know what it's like to not have food. I know what it's like to not have any money for two weeks until I get paid again. Here's a really jacked up story. I used to have a Nissan Stanza. I worked at Northside Hospital and the car was getting old and the fuel gauge stopped working. Sometimes it'll swing. So I'm going to get my check. I have no money. Uh, my daughter's with me in the back seat. I run out of gas on 75. So I'm like walking down 75 with my daughter on my shoulders. And this, this kind guy pulls over and he said, any guy with a kid can't be dangerous. So, you know, gives me some money, go to the service station, which was on West Paces Ferry. I get some gas. I go pick up my check. I'm in that damn broke. So my motivation is very high on managing my money very well. And it, it's just, you know, I, I don't even know how to say it because so many people are just on this whole kick of I'm going to make all this money and it's going to solve all my problems. No, it's not. It's just not. So that's where I came up with that 50 percent deal. You save 50 percent of your money, raise your income and save 50 percent of your money. Most of life's problems will not breathe on your door. They just won't. Grant learned the YouTube and social media marketing from Ty Lopez. Could have, a lot of people learn from Ty Lopez. And I'm going to say something. Everyone on this stream knows who Ty Lopez is. Do you understand how hard that is to do? Melissa V, yes, I got to say, when I started listening to you, I was having a hard time making the money. Now I consider having 1K being broke. Not that I'm rich or anything, but my perspective has changed. There was a story, uh, not a story, it was a Facebook post, about when you have a good employee and you keep your good employee to low-level tasks, and if you reward them for low-level tasks, that's what they will seek out. The same thing happens with you and your business. This is what I'm talking about. You got to scale. You got to push yourself. Like if you made a hundred thousand last year, you need to be pushing for 150. Even if you make 125, it's still more than 100. And then next year, if you make 125, you need to be pushing for that 150 or 170. And every year, you need to be pushing a little bit because you'll get complacent. And when you get complacent, you're dead. Uh, Sarah Adam. Hey, Glenn, any advice for graphic designers and artists? I'm thinking of selling my designs and print-on-demand service e-commerce. Create something beautiful. Shalise Hamley, yes, they have to put in the work. Uh, Purpose Pit, do you recommend doing a chat book? It's cheaper than Create Space Amazon Publishing. And I can charge 10 to 15 more than it would cost on Amazon. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter what it is if people want it. Like the product that we're selling, most people are selling this product for three to about 20 bucks. We're going to go through the door at 39, at 30, high 30 something, probably 39.99 to 40 something. Now, there's many layers to that because one of the things in this market, I have studied this market for weeks. And there's a lot of stuff that's missing. And by adding these extra things, it's going to create perceived value where we can sell it for those price points. Yet the other things that we will add 
they don't cost that much. So it's a value perception. But once again, that's a marketing thing. That's something I learned with selling courses. That's something I learned selling products. That's something I learned selling furniture. And once again, once you do this stuff, you can transfer it to other markets. But if you never do it and you just stay in that conceptual phase and it's all up in your head and you're like high-fiving each other in Facebook groups because you actually completed one task list for the day, it ain't, it's just not going to be pretty. Like I said, those who know how to compete in the pits are the ones who are going to be sitting on thrones in this new future. Why do you think immigrants come here and do so well? You're coming from a country where you can walk down the street and be shot by some warlord. Or you're coming from a country where if your dress is a little bit too short, the religious, peace, the religious police pull you to a side and cane you. And you come here and it's like, what, I can wear what I want. I can say what I want. I can do what I want. I can make money and no one takes it away from me. I can put it in the bank and the next day I go there. It's still, this place is amazing. It's amazing. Oh, my God. I need to get my mother over here. I need to get my daddy over here. You call him back home like, all that stuff you heard about America? Mm, no, you, the streets are literally paid for gold. You need to get your ass over here. Uh, Newport marijuana cigarettes uh, announcing coming to Washington, Colorado. Here comes the competition. I'm surprised the big company. Well, they probably had a weed farm and they did a lot of testing. Not surprised. Uh, Star Scream 1540. Hey, Glendon, I'm one year away from a chemistry degree. Do you know any freelance chemists? I was trying to find a way to start a chemistry business by starting, but startups require a millions. Yeah. Okay. You need to take your chemistry skills and create something else. For you to, to be a chemist and work in a laboratory, and I know a little bit about this. I used to work in a lab. You need so many resources to do the basic things. And those machines are 50, 200, 300, 400, 500, a million, or $2 million. So you need to take your chemistry skills and find out how to use that to make something else that is a consumer product. Pretty much. Hustle porn is all over the internet. I mean, that's some of Instagrams. Like my Instagram, I've changed it to Mac Daddy Media. I'm just going to be talking about stuff that I'm doing. It's all over the place because the thing is, people are in love with the end point of the journey and not so much the journey itself. And that creates a problem. I mean, there's so many things, but for those of you who want to compete, get busy. Start making mistakes today. Edward Lewis, in a fairly inexpensive city, how much money would you invest having saved? If you can save heavily to quit and not stay employed like the typical advice to start a business. I don't know. I don't know what your burn rate is. I don't know how much money you need. I don't know if you're married. I don't know if you have kids. I, don't, I, I have no idea. Um... A general template is, and I say this for everybody, everybody needs 10 G's cash saved somewhere. Everybody. So that's the basics. Like for, all right, here's my story when I started the channel and everything. I, my partner was diagnosed with cancer. I got sick. But we had two warehouses of inventory. And inventory is wealth. It's an asset. And I liquidated both those those warehouses and gave most of the money to my partner. But even after that, I still had close to 400 grand cash in the bank plus other stuff. That's how I got started doing this. I, I Once again, I keep saying I wasn't broke. I didn't have any bills. I wasn't really sleeping on someone's sofa. But I had spent a decade of my life acquiring business skills that gave me the opportunity to take two years to work on my dream. I front loaded my dream. 10 years plus. And a lot of folks want to do that in a few weeks because, you know, who got time for that? What's the name? Sweet Brown? Ain't got time for that. 10 years. And I'm saying that over and over and over again because you'll be people like, well, you know, um, someone said I got drug money out of a storage unit. I think that could be true, but that wasn't it. The whole thing was that inventory. We had a lot of inventory and just pff, liquidated it very quickly. And it was a lot of cash. And that was the reason I was able to work on this book, 
work on this YouTube channel. It, it, I did not start off with this typical story that they tell you to get you all gassed up. That's not going to work. I went the long, hard way, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. And there will be some super quick success stories. But what I've seen since I've been in the space is there's a lot of folks who were hitting it hot in 2009, 10, 11. I don't, I don't know where they are anymore. There's a lot of folks who were hitting it hot 2012, 13, 14. I don't know where they are anymore. I mean, it's like a new group comes in, the old group disappears. New group comes in, the old group disappears. Let's see. Do you want to make extra money? I've got a few things I want to share with you, but first I need to be honest. If you're looking for a get rich quick scheme or you're looking for something that you're going to make thousands of dollars and not work that hard, I have absolutely none of that stuff. If you're looking for real pathways to make real money, I do have some things and they will take dedication. They'll take hard work and they will take effort. What I've developed is the side business starter pack. It's a collection of 23 courses ranging from utilizing Craigslist to starting a YouTube channel. It's very simple, easy to follow, and the courses are quick. You're not going to make millions of dollars, either, but with most of these side businesses, within the first three to four months, $500 to $1,500 per month is viable, real, and can be executed. This collection of courses is for the newbie. You have no idea how to create a side business. You have no clue to what type of side business should you start. You're just out there wanting to make more money. If you follow these directions, they're simple, they're easy to do. I guarantee you, you can make money as soon as next weekend. In some cases, depending upon who you are and which courses you choose, you can make money today. Now let's define what is money. Most of these side hustles and YouTube is not one of them. You can start making 50, 60, a hundred bucks a day within a few weeks or a few months, depending upon how much effort you put into it. And let's be really clear. You must work. As I said in the beginning, these are no pie in the sky. These are no wild schemes. These are things that you can do with effort, hard work to increase your income. Let's talk about YouTube. Everyone wants to start a YouTube channel or a podcast. My YouTube channel is almost 10 years old and I've been making money since the eighth month. I reached a livable income my first year and I wasn't eligible for AdSense. There are many ways that you can start a YouTube channel and make money. However, YouTube is probably one of the most challenging side businesses to create. It's a lot of work and effort up front before you get to the paydays, unless you're a skilled operator. Here's my story. Before I came to YouTube, I ran a storage auction business. Yes, that kind of storage auctions. I did that for almost 10 years, where I would buy units, take the contents, and flip them. And this is how some of these hustles or side businesses were created, especially the Craigslist stuff. I used to make three to $4,000 a week just off Craigslist, day in, month in, year out. It's still a viable source to make money. It's not as easy as it used to be. There are ways that you can make a lot of money on Craigslist for free. One of the things that we're going to get into is the understanding of money. There's money, there's side money, there's profit, there's revenue. And part of that, if you go ahead and you get this course, I also have a free gift for you to get your finances together. Part of making money is accounting for the money you already have. This is gonna be a very adult driven course. It will not be about you making it rain or you posting stuff for the gram. It will be about a dedicated, constructive and structured method for you to increase your income week after week, month after month, year after year. And that's where the real money comes in. My first year on YouTube, I made $62,000 my first 11 months. My second year, I made 92,000. And my third year, I made over a million. I was a skilled operator. I didn't know YouTube, but I know business. And that is one of the biggest things that will help you make a lot of money. Looking at and developing your salesmanship 
and developing your marketing skills. Many of these courses will deal with how to sell stuff on Craigslist, how to have a garage sale, how to start a YouTube channel, and there's a few primer courses, and these are very, very elementary, on how to start a business online. Step by step, we'll take you through these processes. You can start making money, online, offline, wherever. Everyone has to have a start. Many, many years ago, and this is not one of those internet stories, I was actually homeless for a little while, not for years and years, but for a couple of months. Then I moved into a situation called a boarding house where I was living with crackheads. Now this was a long time ago, but since I started to deploy these principles, delayed gratification, hard work, and strategy, you cannot just work hard to work hard. You must be strategic in your hard work. I've never gone back and year after year, my income has increased in the beginning. It's going to be tough. You're going to, you might make 200, 300 bucks your first month, which is a win. But when you compare and contrast it to the people out here who are claiming to go from no money to six figures in six months, a year, you kind of feel that your efforts are not that good. You're like wasting time. The reality is the average person in this country makes less than 28 to $32,000 per year, single person income. Household income is two of those people together. So there's a lot of stories out there about people who are just literally no smarter than you, no better than you. And then all of a sudden they're making all this money. Uh, one of the things I do on my main channel is talk about money and talk about what people make and how to make it and how to build generational wealth. If you go ahead and get the side business starter kit and you make a thousand bucks a month on top of the money that you have with your job, you have drastically increased your chances of becoming rich in the future. That is a huge raise that you can give yourself in your side time or your spare hours. Now let's talk about going from a side business to full time. You're looking at a realistic journey of two to five years. Let me say that again. You're looking at a realistic journey of two to five years. And I'm going to explain to you why. First of all, no one ever said, Hey, you can make money. People's like, get a job, get a degree, go to school, join the military. But no one ever said that, Hey, you can sit down, you can come up with a product or service and you can serve your fellow man and make money. No one says that to you. So there is this process of going from an employee mindset, to a business mindset. And it's not gonna happen overnight. <laughs> it's not gonna happen as quick as you want. You, you eat what you kill. You can have a job and you can coast and you can still get your check on Friday. When you're self-employed, if you don't kill anything, you don't eat on Friday. And that's gonna be another transition of going from your employee mindset to a boss mindset of, I gotta get out here and I gotta get it. Each day, you must perform. And if you don't perform, you don't make any money. And there are days that you still must perform to keep money coming into the future. And we'll talk about all of these things in the uh, starter kit. Now in parting, I want you to really think about this. You're young, you look good, you, you, your teeth are clean. You, you're just ready to take on the world. If you start now and you stay on this track for the next 10 years, you'll look back and you'll be surprised at what you've accomplished because the biggest problem that most people have is getting started. Then the second problem they have is staying with it. Just click the video and you should go to the website and for $147, you'll get 23 courses and over a hundred hours of training. So there's a little bit of something for everyone on how you can begin your side business. If you want more, be sure to subscribe to my channel which is moneyincomeprofit.com. So be sure to go ahead and sign up and get started today. I just noticed you my queen. You looking like some buttercream. You know exactly what I need. Hot cocoa, sweet and savory, and that's you, that's you, it's true, it's true, and that's you, that's you, you do the things that you do, 
I just noticed you my queen You looking like some buttercream you